Every week, the experts at Superior Pools of Southwest Florida share the latest trends in outdoor living spaces, including custom designs, ideas, and innovations. Watch this inspiration and transformation come to life thanks to our expert opinions and tips, and improve your own outdoor paradise. This is Home Sweet Home, presented by Superior Pools. All right, we're at another masterpiece uh, of Michael's here. And also I want to congratulate Michael. Uh, we just won, uh, we're voted the best pool in the US through uh, APSP. And Michael designed that pool. So I wanted to congratulate him. Thanks very much, right. yeah, yeah. You do a great team job. Effort there for so, Superior, yeah. You do a great job. Uh, we're at this pool and I just want you to explain how you came to this masterpiece and uh, step by step basically. So uh, let's first start off with the design and the homeowners and how you started. and where we're at now. Sure, yeah. Uh, Joe and Chris, the homeowners, are up north or in the, the Chicago area. They first called me there and we just had a phone conversation. They were looking to, to move into uh, the community here, Bonita National, and they weren't sure what even home they were going to purchase, what floor plan. So a lot of that, you know, the pool design predicated on, you know, which home, what layout they were going to go with. So I drew up a, a couple different designs on different floor plans and, and we kind of started working through things from there. And at some point, you know, during the process, unfortunately, even though everything is going in, in a good direction now, uh, Joe there was having some, some health issues there, so we kind of took a break. And then when we came back, they had made a decision to purchase a home first in the community, that's first and foremost, and then, you know, what design we were going to go with. And then they had some, uh, some uh, one major big kind of idea, which we'll get to in a second there, that kind of really, uh, you know, allowed me to kind of uh, get the rest of the, uh, the design based off that one feature there, because it's the main focal point of the project. All right, so let's uh, start off with this spa. This spa is different, bigger, and we got different spillway, and it's taller. So. It's taller, yeah, so it's a uh, little bit larger than normal. It's a, an eight foot interior diameter spa, so it allows, you know, certainly six folks to get in there very comfortably. You could probably get anywhere between eight and 10 people in that spa if, you, if you'd like. It's raised 18 inches, a little taller than normal. You know, most, most chairs, yeah, exactly, are eight, 18 or 19 inches tall, so you just walk up, sit on it very easily, swing your legs in. So access is not a non-issue. And, and then just to set it all off, you know, we did what we call a multi-step cascading spillway there to allow that water to trickle down into the pool, kind of create a nice soft sound. And then we accented that with the glass tile so that your eye is drawn solely to that spillway. Like that. Also, it goes on to the sun ledge there. Correct. Yeah, that's a little different. Normally, you know, it'll kind of maybe the, the spa is a little positioned a little bit over. But yeah, just falling on the sun shelf, I thought it would make for a, a large hangout area, you know, where folks are in the spa. A couple of folks here are sitting on the ledge loungers, and you can all converse, some in the pool, some in the spa, but you're all together that way. You just brought up uh, ledge loungers. Uh, we just became a dealer of ledge loungers. So if you like these chairs, give us a call. We can give you a good deal on them. But uh, yeah, you don't need to even sit in the chair. You can sit, you can sit, yeah, right you sit right on there. Yeah, it, you know, a lot of folks like sun shells too because they have grandkids or they have children themselves. Obviously, in, in some sense, it's a, it's a kiddie pool. It's only nine inches deep, six inches of water. The kids or the dogs love the, love the bubbler. And there's an umbrella sleeve in there too so you can get some shade and some cover there, even though the, it's a little cloudy right now. So there's a lot of great features of a sun shelf there. That's an LED one too, right? An LED, yep, so that lights up and really helps uh, keep the sun shelf as brightly lit as the, uh, the rest of the pool there in the evening. And what do we got for tile in here? Yeah, so tile, we did a couple different things. Uh, uh, Chris, the homeowner there, she wanted to uh, incorporate, she calls it Mediterranean blue, you know, the pots there that we went with. She loves that color there. And this is a love tile called Pacific Blue, and it went really well with the Midnight Blue uh, Stonescapes Pebble Finish. Is that, that is, Midnight Blue? Midnight Blue, and uh, we threw, threw some abalone shell in there too for a little bit of luster and sparkle. And then we went with uh, an artistry mosaic blue brick blend tile there to accent both the spillways in the project. It's real nice, and the travertine is? Travertine is uh, Roman blend, it's called. Roman blend? Yeah, which kind of matched. They have a chiseled travertine inside the home in the same French pattern, so when the sliders are open, it's like you can just walk outside and this becomes, which it is, additional living space. Speaking of additional living space, let's uh, walk over to your new creation over here. Okay. Now, you had a lot to do with this, and yes, yep. uh, I guess ba basically give us a step-by-step First, how it came about. Sure. And second, what we're looking at now, you know? Yeah, well, a structure like this is definitely a little more unique down here, certainly in an HOA type community like we are. But the Zampas, the owners, Joe and Chris, uh, they have a similar structure up north in their home in Chicago. 
And after we got working on the design of the pool, they brought that idea up to me. And my first thought was absolutely, I'd love to do it. Of course, my second thought was the, the odds of it getting approved by the HOA are, were kind of slim to none. So that took a lot of time. Luckily, I live in the same community here, so I was able to kind of stay on top of the HOA, but it took about three months for us to finally get approval for this. One of the stipulations was because they're on the preserve lot, not the golf course, they're not going to affect their neighbor's view uh, in the future. But it yeah, really became kind of the, certainly the focal point of the whole project. And uh, I would be living out here every evening if, <laughs> if this was my, my own home, so. That's a great idea. I even want one now. Yeah, so. absolutely. It's really nice. Well, obviously, Mike, you're very detailed, which is a great thing. Uh, let's give us give us some details on the inside of this, because over there you really can't see that now that sure. you're in here. This is very rich looking and very nice. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the homeowners being up from Chicago, obviously, they, when they come down here, they're going to be here generally in the, in the cooler months, so they want to spend as much time out here as possible. Um, you know, hence the fire pit too, especially when things cool down a little bit. So that was a big impetus for creating such such this uh, structure here, the gazebo, but. Um, you know, all the details there are trying to be able to incorporate, even though I don't want to say the builder did it because we take things to another level, kind of make it look like there was a, a forethought when the home itself was being built. So taking some of just the materials there in, in the truss lanai, there's a, a tongue and groove pine ceiling. I wanted to incorporate that. The one little detail though I wanted to do was to vault it uh, because uh, with the step up area, yeah. adds obviously the dimension for the water feature down into the pool, but then you lose some height there in terms of your roof. So vaulting it there, that, that, that adds that space back and just makes it look a little more grandiose. You know, even this eyelash window over here, as we refer to it as, was, you know, privacy from the neighbor when they build the home next door, but you'd still want some light, you still want some airflow and breeze to come through. And we did the trim work here to match the trim work on the front of the house again to make it look like it was all part of this structure. And the same thing goes for, you know, the accent wall with the, with the mantle and the stonework. Their outdoor kitchen incorporates that same material, so everything's cohesive and it all ties ties together. Yeah, I would never know, even from the soffit you know, right here to the tiled roof. Yep, yep. The, uh, the, the other guys, Superior Construction, they did a lot of great research in finding, you know, what is that roof tile called? Who's the vendor that makes it? We wanted to make sure we incorporated all the same materials. Well, that's the little details that mean a lot, and especially like, say in the future they want to resell the house, you know, right. it's, you don't want two things to look separate. You want it to look like it all flows together. Correct, yeah. I don't want to look uh, afterthought. I don't, I never, right. I hate that word. You never want to look like it was, was just added even though we were adding it, Correct. you want to make it look like that forethought was there on day one. Especially when you walk out from your lanai, it's a living space, so you want it to make it look like it's always been there. Correct, yeah. And, you know, that's important. A lot of people, they just want to build you the pool and get your money. Well, it's about what's doing right and for a vision, you know. At the end of the day, I call ourselves artists because you have to be sure. to design something like this. Yeah. And especially you, you deal with it every single day and, you know, you think outside the box and come up with new creative design so yeah and every every project special you can try to you know even though they're not going to be built necessarily next door to one another you want to make that homeowner feel like they have something truly unique and you, and you care a lot too you treat every pool as it's your own pool too right? without a doubt i mean uh, i take a lot of pride this in project i mean even these pots here right so the homeowners here they're out of town and to, to get the product uh the project i should say you know finished off looking these are little accents that make it look like a livable space and uh, you know, took the SUV, my own SUV, went out, bought the pots, all the materials, put them in, and just those little touches that, again, uh, we're not concerned about just you know building the pool and selling the pool, but you know creating that additional living space. This is going to be part of this home. It's here forever, and you want to do it right on the first try. That's huge. Wow, this is uh, <laughs> really nice. I could live out here. Yeah, uh, you, you pretty much have almost everything you need. You know, they have the outdoor kitchen under the, the main lanai, so once you come out here in the evening, you got the TV, the fan, keep things cool. Obviously, the fire pit this time of year, things are starting to cool off. You know, certainly then the water feature here, you know, to, to bring the pool into this gazebo was uh, something I think that was really unique. You know, you could have somebody else just build you a structure, right. but to be able to tie that in and make it one and the same, and obviously that, proved uh, you know, difficult, but that's why we're superior to, to work through all that there, all the logistics of building the pool at the same time as the gazebo, working with another vendor that we've done some pools for ourselves before. Uh, they were great to work with Superior Construction Group. They say, share a name, so obviously yeah. we're, we're aligned with our values. And working with them was, was a great experience there and uh, being able to tie this pool structure into the support columns here and, and the rest of the gazebo. Yeah, so uh, can you just break down kind of a step-by-step -step on how we did this, like we had to do the sure. pool shell and then. Yep, so we uh, we kind of started, you know, like every project, you know, scraping the backyard, getting everything prepared, 
digging the hole for the pool, framing everything out. You know, obviously that goes in for inspection. Then we shot the shell, and then knowing that we had to support these load-bearing walls here, we left uh, uh, all based on the engineering, the, the type of rebar uh, sticking out of the shell there so they could then pour these solid and tie into that. Obviously, there's a big beam up here to support all the weight, especially on this front end compared to the back end that, that has a solid wall. And then it was basically in, in Superior Construction's hands at that point that they pretty much had to do the rest of the build out other than some of the, the, the finish work um, because we couldn't lay this beautiful travertine and the tile and certainly the plaster finish where you're putting roof tile, you're putting stucco and concrete. So they kind of took over and once they were pretty much done, that's when we came back in and, and finished the project then. So something like this wouldn't be your uh, normal build time? Definitely not your normal build time. The Zampas obviously were really patient. It was certainly nice uh, that, you know, this happened during the summer, so they weren't really going to be in town much to begin with. But yeah, they were certainly patient with us. It took you know, upwards of six months to you know, start the construction to having the pool swimmable and everything and the landscaping, everything put back together. Well, and you had the hurricane Irma come through too. Absolutely, and the hurricane, yeah. So that definitely threw us for another wrench there that we, you know, quote unquote, maybe it wasn't consecutive, but you lose quite a bit of time because everybody's out of town. When they come back, they don't have power. You know, everybody's trying to get a new screen at that point. So yeah, we worked through all that as well. Like, uh, you kind of took this whole project over, especially with them being up north. You know, we build pools, we don't provide landscaping. Right. But this one, you you did the extra help on your own with them. Yeah, we wanted it to be, uh, you know, when they came back, it was, it was pretty much all done. And when they did come the last time they were in town, the landscaping was getting put in. Uh, worked with another partner of ours uh, called Nature's Blueprint, and they did an excellent job. And uh, let's we, go uh, take a yeah, look we'll at it. Yeah, take a look out here. So first, you know, a little detail here. we. Uh, had the screen door here open uh, towards the street, so they have two dogs when they come out here to uh, let the dogs out in the backyard, they're facing the right direction, and the, uh, the dogs aren't gonna run towards the street. It's a small little detail like that that doesn't seem like a big deal, but you know, when the customer calls and says, you know, I'd like this, it's uh, easy to forget, so I'll, I'll give a little props to my wife there with all the sticky notes on my desk to, to remind myself of all those little details. But those are those are the, the little details that make a big difference when it's all said and done. You know, details or little details like that are huge. Now, I didn't really notice this on the inside, but being out here, you could have brought that deck all the way out to here. Correct. Was there a reason or? A, a couple of things played into that. You know, one is um, the, the cage itself, you know, there's a certain part when the cage gets so far out from the house, there's a lot of extra engineering and things that have to go in with that, that's of course associated cost. They also wanted a large still area, that's where even with kind of my first ideas on the landscape design, that with the input from Joe and Chris there, that I had some kind of more island effect here with different planters, and they wanted enough room, enough grass space here so the dogs could run, and they have family in town, they can play some games. Uh, things of that nature there. So if we brought the deck in, there still would have been some yard left, but it could have started feeling cramped, and, and the footprint we had to use, especially with the gazebo anyways, was so large, it would have been just kind of uh, bigger for the sake of being larger at that point. But uh, one of the little things that we did that you would have seen from the inside was we still left a little bit of room between the screen and that one support column, so if you get out of the spa and you're on the back side of the pool, you still have an entryway uh, to, uh, to get into the gazebo there. Correct. How uh, was that? Four foot, five foot back there? Yeah, on the back of the deck, you have, due to the radius, is anywhere between four and five feet, and then you have just about three feet, which is like a typical door frame, uh, to get there up those steps and into the gazebo there. Because that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize is, we tell them anything less than three foot on the back side, you're not you're not going to be able to walk back there comfortable. Correct. Yeah. So if you want to walk on the back side of your pool, you need to be at least four or five foot a deck area. Right. Yeah. I always kind of joke with. Uh, with the customer about that three foot mark that you know we walk through doors constantly every day of our lives and we never think of bumping into them and so three feet doesn't sound like much but then when you put in that kind of perspective that it's the width of a door uh you know they we're on the same page there they know that's going to be plenty of room to be able to access the rear of the pool at that point stay tuned for more home sweet home presented by superior pools superior pools of southwest florida have been building pools in florida since 2001 and have constructed over 5,000 pools. From Sarasota to Naples, we are recognized as a top pool builder and number one in customer service, and have been voted to have the number one pool in the world the last two years. A pool signifies relaxation, and our superior designs and execution will provide you with true luxury living. Visit our Fort Myers office, serving lead to Collier counties, or our Port Charlotte office, serving Charlotte to Manatee counties. Join the rest, build with the best. 
Contact us to start building your dream pool today. Baystone Tile, Tampa Bay's largest selection of natural stone. Specializing in travertine and marble both for interior and exterior use, with over 20 million square feet of revolving stock, we're sure we have your project covered. Check out one of our exclusive products such as tiramisu. Travertine, your ideal pool deck material, does not retain heat. Therefore, it's cool on your feet during those hot Florida months. Durability? Remember, it will outlive us all. Check out our newly renovated showroom in Orlando or our brand new 100,000 square foot showroom and warehouse in Tampa. Enjoying the outdoors is what living in Florida is all about. And at Absolute Aluminum, we're in the business of making your outdoor living dreams a reality. We can transform your space into a stunning retreat with open view cages, adjustable pergolas, outdoor kitchens, and many other products. Everything we do is completely custom, maximizing your space to fit your project with our extensive design capabilities. Contact us today or visit our showroom located in Venice, Florida. Hello, we are in Bernita Springs today at the Zampa residence at this beautiful project that we just finished. It's brand new. We're just going to have a roundabout conversation here on how this thing was uh, built and pick uh, Michael, the designer who built this pool, you know, uh, how he came to this. And we got Ben Cook over here, the famous designer from Port Charlotte. We have my wife, Danielle Krausick, and we have my aunt. Uh, Dee Brandt that runs the Fort Myers location along with her husband Mike Brandt. So they do a wonderful job and uh, we're just all going to sit around and pick each other's uh, brains and give you guys at home some info to go off of. Alright, uh, Michael, I love this step down here. You could have done it 110 different ways or so many different ways. You know, my first mindset is, oh, that'd be great for a bar area with some stools to sit and watch TV. But at the other end, then now this is relaxing, it steps down, you know, so it's at the end of the day, it's about your homeowner's lifestyles. And that's our job to do that is to get the info from our homeowners and then build them something that goes with their lives. So I guess uh, give me the feedback on how you came to this or if you thought about that, if there's any other ideas that you had and changed. And Sure, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the impetus uh, for this water feature to some degree was even the past uh, designs there, even on a different floor plan of home, uh, the Zampas definitely wanted to incorporate a water feature above and beyond the spa. So then when the gazebo, the idea of the structure here came into, into uh, focus there, it was kind of like, well, how could I take the water feature and incorporate it into the structure, especially without making it too, too large, too encumbersome. You know, so some of the other designs where we didn't have the structure, we had kind of a, a large raised feature, a lot of tile. And I thought that that would just be too much of a good thing on this particular project. So the idea was twofold, you know, from, from the lanai or the pool, you get to see the water feature up into the gazebo and the TV and the fire pit. But also when, like we're doing now, sitting up here, we get to have that soothing sound of the bubblers. Uh, there's a swim out bench down below. So you kind of have that bar stool effect there where you can, somebody can swim up and, and we can all be together and kind of hang out as we relax, watch TV, have a drink and, and uh, just be with family and friends. So you have this step down fountain was your spa design always the same where you had the step down spillway? Yeah, correct, yeah. And all the uh, previous designs there, the, uh, the spillway for the spa, they liked that idea when I first broached it to them about the cascading effect there. And uh, so that was kind of just natural, I, I thought to me then saying, how can I incorporate it for consistency, uh, you know, over into this water feature. And so that's where, uh, you know, this kind of multi-step uh, effect here with the bubblers certainly originated from the, uh, the, the idea of the spa spillway. I think it goes very well together. Yeah, we took uh, the, the glass tile there and just put it on those spillways too so that it even kind of further enhanced, you know, when you're looking out at the pool, what are the first couple things you notice maybe other than the structure itself are the, are the two water features there. So we did, did highlight that by that glass tile. Mr. Cook, if you had this layout and the budget, would you build something exactly the same or would you tie something else into it? If that's a hard question to answer because every client's totally different. You know, just because they have the same budget, same basic needs, doesn't mean every design is gonna work out the same. So, you know, one of the things that I really liked about this space, walking in here, was just the usage of space that you had here. And actually, I do have a client right now that's looking for a similar type feel with the gazebo and built into the pool. And it, it's gonna be a different design because of placement, where they want, you know, different aspects of it. For instance, this one, they want a spa that's built into the gazebo, more of like a bar top. 
on the spa. So, you know, it's a hard question to answer just because every house is different. Everybody's, you know, specific needs are different, but that's what's so great in working with a designer because we can make all those little pieces of what somebody's looking for come to a big picture like this. And I mean, you did a great job here. Just it fits everything that you said, you know, that the client was looking for. It, it all works out really nicely. Ben, uh, me and you always been going back and forth. I know you want to do uh, a gazebo inside the pool, sunken in. I think Mike will beat you to it on this one. It's a little bit different, but you can get some ideas from them on, you know, what to do and what not to do in the future. Cause at the end of the day, it's somewhat the same thing. You excited about that? Yes, John, I'm super excited. Um, it's always cool to see you know, when you have an idea like that, that you haven't necessarily done, it's cool to see somebody else do it and then be able to pick on points that they uh, ran into or, you know, different aspects that you can actually see it and it, it really, uh, you know, progress your idea. So like what you were talking about, one of the ideas that I keep trying to do is, is more of a seating area in the pool too. So kind of like this, but different, you know, and that's, that's the cool thing too about, you know, working with people and working with different ideas, trying to incorporate something different on every pool. I mean, I've seen lots of your pools and it's the same thing. It just kind of, no one of them is the same. You might see aspects of one in another, but they're never the same. And that's, I think the greatest part about this job. I mean, that's one of the things I like the best is just being able to be creative. And, you know, at the end of the day, figure out what somebody's looking for and make it come to come to light. So Michael, one of the cool things I noticed as soon as I walked in was a nice visual from the lanai on both sides and just the usage of space here. Um, that's one thing that I always like to harp on, I'd say, you know, is just making space. So what, you know, what did you guys, how did that all come about and how did you figure this space here, this space here, this. Sure, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's important to, uh, to utilize the space that you're building within uh, as best you can. You know, a lot of these times with these surveys and the HOA rules, you're kind of, you know, working within a box, so to speak. And you want to then utilize the space within that footprint uh, the best you can. You just don't want to build a, a massive pool or a tiny pool and too much deck. You want a nice compromise between, the, both, between both uh, features. You know, using the 3D software that we use there really helps the customer visualize uh, what we can fit in a certain space, whether that's a chaise lounge, whether that's a whole dining room table, whether it's these sofas we're sitting on here, you know, this whole project was drawn in 3D. The customers kind of lived in it, so to speak, you know, before it ever got started uh, being built. But, um, you know, a couple of things that I like to do, especially on projects like this, where you do have a little bit more room, is if you can push the pool back a little bit further from the home, your field of vision uh, can take in the equivalent of like, say a camera lens of about like 18 millimeters. So you can see a lot if you push the pool a little bit back, that just makes the same project look that much more uh, grandiose. If you have a little more space, make sure lanai feels so much larger. And then having good utilization of deck on either side. You know, you can have a dining room set over here. You can have a couple chaise lounges over there. It's nice to have everybody gather together, but it's also nice sometimes to have a separate area where you can read a book. They can have a conversation or drink over on the other side of the deck. You definitely, definitely nailed it on this one. Lots of living spaces and when you design you throw all the furniture in here and incorporate yeah, it yeah. all so they pot, yeah the potted plants you know the landscaping um, you know even though we don't do the landscape ourselves it, it just paints the picture of this is the living space not just the swimming pool that we're going to build this is the living space that we're going to build it for that customer there and, and it really makes them feel uh you know that like i said they've almost been there before so when the pool is built obviously it's even better in person but it, there's no surprises on, on the back end of things yeah Stay tuned for more Home Sweet Home presented by Superior Pools. Enjoying the outdoors is what living in Florida is all about. And at Absolute Aluminum, we're in the business of making your outdoor living dreams a reality. We can transform your space into a stunning retreat with open view cages, adjustable pergolas, outdoor kitchens, and many other products. Everything we do is completely custom maximizing your space to fit your project with our extensive design capabilities. Contact us today or visit our showroom located in Venice, Florida. Superior Pools of Southwest Florida have been building pools in Florida since 2001 and have constructed over 5,000 pools. From Sarasota to Naples, 
we are recognized as a top pool builder and number one in customer service and have been voted to have the number one pool in the world the last two years. A pool signifies relaxation, and our superior designs and execution will provide you with true luxury living. Visit our Fort Myers office, serving Lee to Collier counties, or our Port Charlotte office, serving Charlotte to Manatee counties. Join the rest, build with the best. Contact us to start building your dream pool today. Based on tile. Tampa Bay's largest selection of natural stone. Specializing in travertine and marble both for interior and exterior use, with over 20 million square feet of revolving stock, we're sure we have your project covered. Check out one of our exclusive products such as tiramisu. Travertine, your ideal pool deck material, does not retain heat. Therefore, it's cool on your feet during those hot Florida months. Durability? Remember, it will outlive us all. Check out our newly renovated showroom in Orlando or our brand new 100,000 square foot showroom and warehouse in Tampa. Enjoying the outdoors is what living in Florida is all about. And at Absolute Aluminum, we are in the business of making your outdoor living dreams a reality. We can transform your space into a stunning retreat with open view cages, adjustable pergolas, outdoor kitchens, and many other products. Everything we do is completely custom, maximizing your space to fit your project with our extensive design capabilities. Contact us today or visit our showroom located in Venice, Florida. All right, Mike, uh, I know you had some great stories with the homeowner and uh, with them being up north again, you taking care of everything. Just let fill me in a little bit on what you did when the hurricane was coming because when I heard that, I was like, wow, man, this guy, <laughs> he really cares. Sure, yeah, I mean, uh, all my customers, uh, you know, become a part of the family of the Superior Pools. Um, you know, in this case, too, they're, they're my neighbors. You know, they, we live in the same community and they were up in Chicago, they weren't here for it. Um, luckily for them, so they didn't have to experience the power outages on the back end of things. But uh, on the front end there, uh, you know, even my dad helped out. Most of these homes here have uh, impact glass, but they have a, an aquarium window by the kitchen. So we came over, my dad and I, just before the storm, put the shutter up for them. Uh, after the fact, when we didn't have any power, they had kind of remembered they left quite a bit of stuff in the fridge and the freezer. So I came back and, and took care of those things uh, so that the house didn't uh, smell too differently uh, when they came back into town. And I was happy to do that because those that's you know definitely care about about them and the project and that's those were the kind of some of the things we had to deal with there in terms of the hurricane but you know in terms of the stage we were at we had a lot of the the finished work done the deck was down the tile was obviously in the coping and everything the gazebo was was pretty much finished at that point but we definitely uh, dodged a bullet we didn't get too much damage but uh, some of the structure on the roof there some of the roof tiles had to get uh, fixed and uh, we didn't have the screen up at that point and um, you know, that was probably always a good thing because you never know what you're going to get, certainly with the winds and the gusts. Um, so it, it delayed us a little bit after the fact, you know, everybody getting back in town, power getting put back and, and restored. But, uh, you know, we, we plugged a lawn and, uh, and got things knocked out pretty, pretty quickly thereafter. If you're interested in having a pool built by Superior Pools, please visit www.superiorpools.com. Home Sweet Home, presented by Superior Pools, would like to thank our sponsors.